Hey friends, greetings, welcome. This is Anya Light here, loving the love and the light within you. I hope you're having an excellent day. This is a message for people who have survived really shitty things. So if you are a survivor of abuse, a survivor of domestic violence, of trauma, of war, if you've survived something and you have picked yourself up off the ground, out of the ashes, and are in the process of rebuilding a new life for yourself, I am talking to you today. I wanted to talk about the three pillars of healing that move us from survivor to thriver. I absolutely am grateful for the term survivor because it helps us to orient when we've gone through something very, very difficult. When we have gone into hell realms and we are currently working on processing that and getting the heck out of the hell realm, it's important to have a label to guide us, to orient us on our journey. So I think the word survivor is blessed for that. And also there comes a time in the journey, in the healing journey, when we move beyond simply surviving something, but we move into the world of thriving. And this is a transitional experiment that we have with the universe when we decide, when we choose to move beyond surviving into thriving. It is truly a sacred and blessed journey. So as someone who has made the transition from survivor to thriver, I speak to you from personal experience and just know that I understand. Um, I have endured uh, physical and emotional abuse in my life, much of it, and have done the really hard work of healing myself and moving beyond. So just know that whatever you're going through, I can relate. So for me, what has been absolutely crucial to my healing journey are three pillars, and I'm going to share about those today. The three pillars of moving into th the dimension of thriving, which is where we are all going and where I promise you, you will be at some point. The first, and these are in no particular order because they're all of equal importance, the first pillar is authenticity. So in order to cultivate a courageous heart, in order to cultivate a willingness to step into the unknown, a willingness to break the molds of the karmic lineage that has enabled the abuse or the trauma or the fear that you've gone through, that lineage stretches back throughout human history and we're currently, as a human species, working to heal and evolve and move beyond all those old energies. And in order to do that, we need to give ourselves permission to be 100% authentic in who we are. Now, some people get confused about this and think that authenticity just basically means that I can say whatever I want, I can do whatever I want, and disregard everyone's feelings and thoughts. And that's not exactly what I'm talking about. We can be authentically ourselves while also being compassionate and kind and gentle with other people who may have different views than us. So I think it can be, I think people can get confused about this in the sense of if I'm authentic, that means that I can just be myself 100% of the time and screw the consequences and if other people don't like me they can just kiss my ass and all this stuff but no being authentic means 
that we are grounded and stable enough in ourselves to recognize the places and people that we feel safe around. And when we feel that inkling of safety, that inkling of being at home in an environment or with certain people, we take the full opportunity to go deep with those people. So this is not necessarily that you can be authentic in every situation in your life. That's just not possible, at least how the planet is, human society is structured right now is just not possible. You know, many, for example, people that I am friends with are nudists and they love to be nude, but they cannot, you know, be 100% authentic and walk down the street in many places in the world because they get arrested. So, I mean, that's just a sort of silly example, but... What I'm saying is that when we can tune into, when the universe brings to us, and it will, and if you haven't experienced it yet, set that intention today that you're open to receive this. When you receive the loving support of a person or multiple people, a relationship or a place, like a favorite place in the world, a place that you go to, you feel 100% relaxed and safe and secure Maybe it's a magical island on a beach somewhere. Maybe it's a cave in the mountains. Maybe it is a sacred meadow or a river. But those places and those people that we find, let's take full opportunity to then show ourselves completely. And this can be so scary. Speaking from personal experience, I am in the midst of co-creating and... A community, a spiritual healing community here in Ohio, uh, Ordinary Pioneer, and it has been challenging and I preach authenticity. I have for years, but even still, there's times when I wake up in the wrong side of the bed and feeling grief, fear, anxiety, and the last thing I want to do is show my face and show people how I'm feeling especially as a leader in that community, there's this odd notion that I have sometimes <laughs> that I have to be perfect and that I have to always be shiny and happy and on your light and bleh. But the truth is, and, and I was just having a session just a few minutes ago with this beloved soul and she was saying quite rightly that um, to remind us all to not spiritually bypass, we have to sometimes go into the shit. <laughs> so going into the shit means Sometimes being around other beings and being our, courageous enough to be our authentic selves. And in that process, it's an alchem alchemical process. When we feel held in unconditional love and support, even if it's just one other person or even if it's just a sacred tree that just seems to get us and we just hold that tree and sit by it and feel the angels coming to us whatever that place or person or people is and we allow ourselves to cry and we allow ourselves to just feel bad for a few minutes or a few hours or a few days or however long it lasts we have that daringness to be authentic of how we're doing dude that's where the magic happens and that is where the growth happens and it is not fun often and it's not pleasant but that is where authenticity that is how we grow. We allow ourselves to be seen and held in a space of love. And then we learn through that being held by whether it's the angels or the tree or the people, we learn deeper and deeper that we are okay and we are enough just as we are. And that has radical effects on our state of being. So that's the first pillar, authenticity. The second pillar to moving from surviving to thriving is gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Do you have a daily gratitude practice? If not, I highly suggest that you find one. For me, my gratitude practice I've been working with for, I don't even know, maybe 10 years now or something like that, maybe eight, nine, 10 years, um, where I wake up every morning and the first thing I do before I get out of bed is I lay in bed, I'm like halfway asleep and halfway awake, and I lay there and I drift in and out of consciousness and I start just listing all the things I'm grateful for. That's how I start my day. I don't get out of bed until I start just listing. And it's just so automatic. When I start waking up, 
boom, gratitude. I have other practices that I do throughout the day as well with gratitude, um, but that's the main one and it has served me so very well. Gratitude shifts us out of the victimized mindset that we can get in when we're merely surviving. And when we're merely surviving, we also tend to point fingers of blame. It's your fault that I feel upset. You ruined my life. You destroyed me. You abused me. You hurt me. It's all like this. When we tune into the feeling of gratitude, what we are doing is we are basically looking into the universe for all the stuff that's going well. <laughs> And then we get out of that blamey mindset and we then open our hearts because gratitude is fundamentally an opening of the heart process. We alert the universe that we are, sa we are ready to receive more blessings. We are ready to receive more wonderful things to then point out and be grateful for. So gratitude has been one of the major pillars in my healing journey and it is something that I highly recommend you can maybe do a gratitude journal where you daily write down what you're grateful for um, you can do all kinds of different practices they're all out there you know on the internet and really just make gratitude a massive priority in your life and I promise you your vibration will go up and up and up and up and then life will become more easy, life will become less like a burden, life will become less scary, and it will become just so more and more and more filled with joy. Last but not least, the third pillar of moving from surviving to thriving is... Hmm, service. <laughs> oh, service. Service is when... We give back. Now, we may not always feel like it. In fact, often we don't. Often we are still working through fear and we're still working through feelings of scarcity and worry and doubt and self-doubt. Self and so we may even feel sometimes that we have nothing to contribute. Like, what do I have to give? I'm just a mess, you know? And that's okay if you're feeling that way. However... Digging deep into our courage and allowing ourselves to be of service as much as we can. Be of service. It doesn't have to be huge. It could just be holding the door open for someone and smiling on a particular day. Uh, this morning I had such a blessed, a blessed experience at the laundromat. I live in this little small town and even here in this little small town, it sometimes feels like people are very rushed and very like not interacting with each other, um, which makes me sad. This morning though, I was pulling my laundry basket out of my vehicle and walking towards the door and it was a huge laundry basket because I really suck at doing laundry and I let it pile up. So I had so much laundry that I was holding and I was like <laughs> almost going to fall over and I was walking towards the door of the laundromat and this gentleman who was uh, probably in his 70s or 80s who was standing near the building um, filling up a water jug because they have like a water dispensary next to the laundromat. He was in the middle of doing his thing and he saw me and he's like, oh, do you need some help? And I was like, no, 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 I got it. And he's like, no, no, no. And he like ran like fast so he could like bolt, he bolted and then arrived in front of me and held the door open for me. And I was like, wow, you're so kind. Like, thank you. Like, that was really nice. And we got into this conversation about kindness and his small act of service to me really lifted my spirits. I mean, I was already in a good mood today. Today has been a very, very high vibe day. But I tell you, this man that I didn't know, um, we had this blessed conversation. And he was talking about how um, for Christmas, he always has an open house and just anyone can come who, who wants to be together with people. And he, he lets anybody come over to his house and he's just talking about how like it doesn't take a lot to be nice to people, to be kind, to offer that human love to people who are strangers. Like what's a stranger? We're all one, right? We forget that. So moving from thriver to, or sorry, moving from survivor to thriver really is about service and it doesn't have to be huge. It can just be having a nice conversation with someone. It could be making eye contact with the cashier. 
it can be calling up a friend who's struggling. It could be sending um, a wishing you well card to someone who's just had surgery. It can be uh, recording an inspiring video and putting on YouTube. It can be um, adopting an animal. It could be it could be so many different things of just every day really focusing on what am I putting out into the universe? What am I sharing? What am I giving? And sharing can often be so joyful. I mean, for me, I am a poet. I am a writer and I love to write. By the way, um, I have a completely free newsletter that I'd love for you to join if you resonate with my words today. Um, check the link in the description box below and, get, and please sign up for my newsletter. I send it out about once or twice a month and sharing words with people is my absolute most favorite thing in the world. Um, I get such joy out of sharing inspiring messages with people. So please sign up for my newsletter and receive receive um, my words of inspiration. So, and that, you know, there's certain acts of service that we can provide the world that not only like uplift others, but when we do it, we get so high. I mean, so high. Sometimes I think, who drugs are silly. <laughs> we just need to like do the things we're passionate about because that brings us the most energy. So what are the things you already love to do and share it more with people? Are you a singer? Call up a friend and sing them a little song. Are you mm, a painter? Create a painting and leave it as a gift for a stranger on a park bench with a little note that says, for you, I love you or something. There's so many ways that we can tune into our God-given gifts and share, be of service, make this world a better place. I know sometimes we wake up in the morning and we just feel tired. We just feel overwhelmed. The healing journey is a lot. We get, we're working through all these triggers. Maybe we're feeling physically ill and tired and exhausted and all these things. Trust me, I have been there. I have been there. But even on my worst days, I do my best to remember how can I be of service today. And truly, 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 that has been a game changer. Absolute game changer. The realization that the more I give, the more I receive. And I don't give with the idea of receiving. It's not like a reciprocal, it's not like a transaction. But I do notice that the more that I put out, I receive like tenfold, a thousandfold back to me. And it's just this continuous loop of love that the universe shares back with me when I share out. So those are the three pillars, gratitude, service, authenticity. Make those pillars in your life, dear friends, and I absolutely guarantee that you will move with more and more grace through the healing process. Trauma is so hard. I know it. I know it. I know it. Sometimes we go into the depths of despair, hopelessness, depression. Sometimes there's really just it feels like we're just clawing at the dirt trying to get out of this hole and just the we're looking up and it's like the the it, we're so trapped we're so scared but I tell you that even if you just incorporate one of these things into the rest of your day and just see how that makes you feel and see how your vibration shifts upward all right sweet friends again please um, sign up for my newsletter I'd love to send you words of love and that's all for me today Wishing you blessings on your your journey of healing. Oh yeah, one more thing, and I wanted to give a big ooh, ooh, shout out to C. C, we have been walking together hand in hand for a number of years now, and I've just loved watching your healing journey. And I just want to let you know that you have a depth of courage and strength inside of you that blows me away. And I know you are capable of continuing this healing journey. And so see, I just, I'm thinking of you today and I just wanted to give you like a public shout out and let you know that I love you dearly and I believe in you. And it's just my honor to walk hand in hand with you as we remember that we are going home back to love, back to our true, true self. Thanks C for inspiring me. I love you. All right, friends, take good care and I'll see you later.